Hi, welcome to this video. Uh, today in this video I'm going to show you how to install a dash cam. This is going to be a complete guide uh, all the way up to hardwiring a dash cam, different options for installing a dash cam. If you don't want to hardwire it I'll show you how to install it, run the cables round and tuck them out of the way so you can get to the cigarette lighter and have a nice neat install and not have wiring hanging around everywhere. Today we're going to be fitting the next base. This is a complete kit. It comes with a hardwire kit included. Piggyback fuses. Uh, so that's this is what we're going to be using today to hardwire this kit. Next base dash cam here. This will work. This video is for any dash camera. It doesn't have to be necessarily a next base. Um, so the things you're going to need: a dash cam, obviously. A hardwire kit, if available for your camera, is a, a very good idea. If not, it's not essential. We'll show you how to install it without one. <clears throat> Piggyback fuses. You can order these online. Get these from eBay. Check what type of fuse you've got. Uh, make sure your car has got a fuse box at the front. Some cars don't. Uh, some of the old Vauxhall courses do not have a fuse box at the front so you would have to hardwire the kit anyway so you would not need one of these. In that case if you have not got a hardwire kit you'll need to buy yourself one of these. This is a accessory socket. You can purchase these again on eBay, Amazon for not a lot of money. This is gonna take place of your original 12 volt socket so you'll plug into here, earth this end and then we'll connect this with a fuse to a ignition switched live feed for your dash cam to turn on and off with the car. Uh, I will tell you how to install this. Uh, ideally you'll want to solder this in if you're going to use this type of kit. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Some wire strippers, you'll probably need some of these. If you're using crimps you want to get yourself some crimpers you want some electrical tape I'm going to use some cloth tape today but that's not essential and you're going to need a trim tool for removing trim and just tucking wiring in so that's the tools you're going to need in this vehicle I will be hard wiring it but we will talk about using the this socket as well and the piggyback fuses what you'll do with this I'll talk about this at the minute because I'm not going to be using these today you need to find your fuse box at the front of your vehicle so either on the driver's side end of the dashboard under the driver's side here behind the glove compartment so you just need to locate where your fuse box is before you do your installation so you know which way you're going to be running the wiring around your windscreen so if you're going to be coming down the driver's side pillar or if you're going to be coming down the passenger side pillar so you just need to locate your fuse box have a look to see what size fuses you have because these come in two different sizes and they're even coming in a third type of fuse now uh, really small micro fuses on some of the newer cars so you need to just establish what fuse size you have before you order your piggyback fuse holder, your Alice circuit fuse holder. So yeah, once you've run the wiring, which we'll do in a minute, to your fuse box location, you'll then need to take the cover off your fuse box and have a look through your list of fuses. And you'll want to find something that's on an accessory. So something that is not essential. So you don't want to be connecting it into your fuel pump uh, wiring or something like that just in case you do do something wrong the last thing you want to do is disable your car so you want to look for something like a rear screen heater or electric window fuse and use that for this so and what you would do is you'll use the original fuse in the top slots here and then you'd add your fuse for your dash cam so it wouldn't need to be a very high fuse, probably only like a 5 amp into the second fuse slot there. And then that then puts a feed down here when the ignition is turned on to turn your dash cam on. So that's how we use the piggyback fuse holders. So if you have any questions about these, uh, just drop a comment down below and I will answer your, 
your questions. So that's it really for the piggyback adder fuse holders at the moment. So I'm going to put them down. If you're using this with this, which you quite most likely might do, you need to add your live in there. Uh, this black's the earth. So and then you'd plug your socket that would normally plug into your 12 volts into here. I'd recommend using some electric tape on this to hold this tight and then would place this behind the panels behind the fuse box uh, preferably cable tied up with the extra cable from your dash cam and then we'll tuck this up inside and then this would then replace your 12 volt socket like I said earlier so you don't need to be trying to cut the ends off your wiring for your dash cam so here's the dash cam oh, let me just slice this open If you've just bought the dash cam like this, you will have in the box one of these leads. This is your standard power socket lead. So this is what you want me to plug into your 12 volt. So we're not going to use this in this installation today, but this is most likely what you will have with your kit. So you'll need one of these, one of these to then plug into decide if we're going to hardwire it so if your car does not have a uh, a fuse box at the front so we would hardwire this to a switched ignition uh, which you can be found normally in the passenger side kick panel the driver's side kick panel um, again if you want to know where to find a switched feed on your vehicle drop me a comment below and I shall certainly help you out and tell you what colour wire you're looking for and what feeds you need for this Okay, so I'm not going to talk about this anymore. So we've covered this, we've covered the piggyback fuse. We are going to be using a hardwire kit today, which we will be soldering in. So I'm going to come back to this in a minute once we start the installation. Uh, we're going to unpackage the camera. I'll do that off camera. You don't need to see me taking all the bits out of the box. It'll make the video too long. And then we're going to talk about location and starting to run the wiring. So I'll be back in a second with that. Okay, so with the camera out of the box, first thing you want to do is peel this blue film off pull this off we'll follow the instructions on the back of this in a minute so nice shiny new camera see location I'm gonna put this just up this side of the the ring mirror over here I don't know if you can see it so as you are sitting in the car it's behind the mirror in the box we have two different mounting options, we have the rubber sucker, we also have the stick on cap. This is going to be stuck on so I'm going to use the one here, Just take this out. so I'm going to swap the sucker for this rubber mount, I mean stick on mount, so I'm just going to zeal it now, hold on. So, just installed the SD card, put this mount on. So, we're now ready to look at uh, installation location. So, we're now going to put this up there. I'm just going to pop the camera up here and we shall, you will be able to see me now do the installation. from the passenger side we're now going to have a look at a good mounting location for the camera like I said before we want it up behind the mirror and out the way as much as possible from the driver's view I think about there is a good location this is a brand new car so I'm expecting the windscreen to be nice and clean but we'll just give it a quick wipe down anyway into location and we're going to tighten the swivel ball joint so that is now locked in nice and tight 
we will adjust that in a little bit just to make sure it is pointing in the right direction so with the the camera now in place we can look at running the wiring So we want to tuck the wiring up right out of the way. We want to get it up into the headliner up here. Just bring it along and put the extra over here out of the way. This is where we use our trim tool to help us pop the headlining down just with your fingers. And we're going to tuck the wiring just up inside the headlining. Okay. And on this side, just use the trim tool because it's a little bit tricky. Just up like that. Bring itself a little bit of slack across just so we've got something to work with. The next thing we want to do is put it tight and not have any wiggle room up this end once we've run it around the windscreen. So now we're just going to run it across the top of the headliner. Little trick, you can put a cable tie around here and cut the end off and then you've got a little lump to stop it from hanging down on the driver's side just in case your headlining is not quite tight enough so now we've got the camera mounted and the wiring run along the top of the windscreen we now come to the A pillar so we're now at the A pillar here most A pillars will just unclip which we are going to do with this one just put your fingers in the top of it and give it a little tuck and unclip. You can see the clip just in there. There we go. That's one. Two. Three. So we can slide this out some cars you may have an airbag in this point here so we need to make sure that we are going around and behind the airbag and not in front of the airbag because the last thing we want to do is put this wire in front of the airbag if the airbag deploys this wire is going to uh, stop that from happening so you want to make sure you tuck the wire in for this behind the airbag and out of the way so now we're going to come down the, the driver's side a pillar and we're going to use this wire that's already here and some, I'm going to use some cloth tape for this. Uh, you can, of course, use cable ties. I just prefer the cloth tape, it looks more manufactured, installed. the wiring now like this we're now tuck rest around the end down here if you don't want to take all of the uh, the a pillar trim off you don't have to you can just bring the wiring around the edge and just tuck it down the side of the door rubber that's fine if you want to do it like that um, we are doing a, a full installation here okay so we have quite a lot of extra cable here really good tip now because I know that I'm going to wire it up on the driver's side here so I'm going to have all of this extra wire instead of having that all looped up right down here we've got all this space up here in the pillar 
So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to loop this back over on itself, up and down, until I have a, a much more manageable amount of wiring down inside the driver's side end of dashboard. So looking at what I need, get that to about there, so I have all of this extra wiring we can lose inside the pillar here. So for this I am going to cable tie this remainder off out of the way. Of course if you didn't want to take the A pillar off you can just tuck all this wiring in the end of the dash with a cable tie and tie it to the cable tie to the the inside of the dashboard, uh, the end of the bracket, metal bracket on the end of the dash, or up behind the glove box. This is just personal preference on how I like to, to do the installations. as neat as I'd like but it is certainly out of the way and it saves it all being in the end of the dash. So now we're around there and we're down to a point as you can see the wiring is all very nicely tucked out of the way. So now we're just going to reinstall our A-pillar trim. Make sure you all the clips are still on the, the trim and not left in the, the metal work. On this they have all come off for me so we are just going to reinstall Sure it's all clipped right back in. These will always be clipped in uh, with the addition of maybe a bolt up the top here under maybe an airbag symbol. So there we go. Right, we're now down to the end of the dashboard. So let's bring you around. You can see all very nice and neat, no wiring showing at all. Like I say, if you want to, you can just run the wiring along the top here, tuck it in, bring it around here, and then run it down the the rubber side of this pillar here and then we are now down to the end of the dashboard down here and this install I'm actually going to be taking an ignition feed off the back of the light switch and earthing it up here so I'll come around here so I have the converter to do 12 to 5 volts which I'll probably cable tie up just in there or to the end on the here so it doesn't rattle around we have two wires here one's a black this is going to be our earth wire and this is our red uh, i'm going to put a fuse in line here to here so on the back of the volkswagen light switch it's black and purple here in the corner always this black and purple or black and yellow right in the corner is an ignition and this red and blue is always a live so if you ever have a volkswagen you need to take the headlight switch out you just push it in, click it to side lights, and then the switch pops out. So that's how to remove the light switch if you need to. So now I'm going to get a fuse and start wiring up this end. And uh, I'll bring you back in a second once we've got that bit done. Okay, so I've now soldered a fuse onto the end of here. This has got a 5 amp fuse in, some electrical tape. I've cut the wiring down because I didn't need all that extra length. Put an earth terminal on here which I'm going to earth to the metal end of the dash just in there with a screw. You can use, say, an original earth screw there or undo the bolt there or there and use one of those to earth it. Anything that's bare metal in the car should be a good earth point. So I'm going to run the wiring around here and bring it out to here. And we're going to connect our ignition. I'm going to solder it onto here. That's our ignition feed, and we're going to earth the camera just up in there using a tech screw in this job. So I'm just going to do that, and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so now soldered 
onto here. You don't necessarily have to solder this. You can strip this back, twist it around. Just make sure you use some electrical tape on it. I would recommend soldering it, but I know that a lot of people are not going to have a soldering iron. So twist that around there well and a lot of electrical tape and then tape up the whole lot. Um, so there you go, that's your ignition feed. And then I've put a tech screw in there with a the earth connection. So I'm just now going to tidy all of this up, tape it up, and you can see what it looks like once it's complete and we'll check the camera's working. Okay, so it's the complete installation now of the dash can. So you can see there I've just put a cable tie around the little unit there, it's not going anywhere, it's in solid. Left a little bit of extra slack here just so it's out of the way. So we can now clip the end panel back on. Like that, there we go. The light switch has gone back in. So now we're going to actually try the camera out. Okay, so. Got the camera up there. Turn the ignition on. And there we go. It comes to life. So there we go. That concludes the video of how to hardwire your, your dash camera. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe. Any comments or questions you have, please uh, drop a question below. Uh, I would like you to subscribe though if I do have a question. Um, if you subscribe to me, I will definitely answer. Uh, thanks for watching this video and uh, I'll see you on the next one.